Welcome back to AP Chemistry. My name is Jeremy Krug, and I'm glad to have you back with another lesson here, where today we're learning about how to name ionic compounds. And so there are a few steps that we need to go through in order to do this. Uh, first of all, you want to write the name of the cation. And in case you've forgotten from the last lesson, cations are always positive. And they're always written as the first part of the name or the first part of a formula. Next, you, you want to write the name of the anion. And, of course, those are always negative, and they're always written as the last or the second part of a name or a formula in chemistry. Usually, that's all you have to do. You know, and a lot of the times, you just write the cation and the anion and then uh, be done with it. But sometimes, we have transition metals in there. If the cation is a transition metal, that means it's one of those elements in groups 3 through 12, you, you need to write its charge as a Roman numeral in parentheses, which means you have to figure out what its charge is. We'll talk about how to do that here in a few minutes. Now, there are a couple exceptions to this rule. There are three transition metals, silver, zinc, and cadmium, uh, that don't need to have the Roman numeral in parentheses. And that's because those, those elements don't have charges that change. You know, silver is always a plus one. Zinc and cadmium are always plus two. So there's no need. It's actually redundant if you were to say, you know, zinc two chloride, for example. You don't need, need to have it there. There are some other exceptions as well. There are a few metals that aren't transition metals, but do need to have Roman numerals in parentheses. And I'm thinking specifically of tin, lead, antimony, and bismuth. Those are the most common elements that will uh, need Roman numerals in parentheses that aren't transition metals. There are a couple others, but, but we normally don't deal with those in AP chemistry very much. So let's get some practice here. And just like in the last video, we'll start out slow and then we'll uh, work our way to some more advanced examples here. So we'll start with this example. And once again, it's just a matter of naming the first one and then naming the second one. So Mg up here is going to be named as magnesium. And then we have the NO2, which hopefully you've learned the ions from the ion chart. And if not, you can see that it's going to be nitrite. So magnesium nitrite. Once again, the goal is to learn these ions so that you can get these names very quickly. You know, just right off the top of your head. If you need an ion chart, go to my website, krugslist.org, and uh, download a copy of the uh, ion chart by clicking on AP Chemistry. So next we have this compound here. Ca is calcium. And PO4 is phosphate. And that's it. Don't worry about the three or the two or anything like that. Sometimes there's this temptation to put a, a di or a tri in there. Don't do that for ionic compounds. You know, just, just the, the names of those ions. That's all you have to put in there. Calcium phosphate in this case. Here's another one. Sometimes if it's, if it's a little bit tricky and you're not sure as to where to divide, where to uh, w w where the cation ends and where the anion begins? Well, the best rule of thumb I can think of is to make the dividing point be after the first metal. Okay, so the first metal here is Rb. We're going to cut it in half, and that's a good place to cut it in half because Rb is rubidium, and then HSO4. There is an ion. There is a formula for that on your ion chart. It's called hydrogen sulfate. It's one of those ions that looks like it will be more complex than that, but that's what it is. It's rubidium hydrogen sulfate. For that formula, for that compound. Next we have Fe, which is iron. So we write that down. And then we have ClO4, which is perchlorate. Iron perchlorate. Now, you might remember iron is a transition metal, so we're going to have to figure out what is its charge to put in parentheses in Roman numerals. Well, we have to go back to the formula here, and this is where we have to start looking at those subscripts. We have to unswap the subscripts. You know, we see a 1 here and a 3 here, so we have to unswap them. So 
you know, the one, that was the charge on perchlorate, and that means this three right here is the charge on iron. So it's iron three perchlorate. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing how that's done. Let's, let's try another example here, and we'll start with CuBrO3 on the next slide. So we know that Cu is copper, and BrO3 is bromate, and copper is a transition metal, so it looks like we need to unswap the charges, but the problem is there are no charges to unswap. You see, this 3 is part of the bromate polyatomic ion, so we can't that's not anything to swap or unswap. We just have to, that's part of the, the ion. So since there are no subscripts here, then we have to assume that the two ions had charges that canceled out. Because you might remember from the last lesson, if the charges cancel out, we don't swap them. You know? So that means they must have canceled out. Well, BrO3 from the ion chart is a negative one. So that means that the copper has to have been positive one. So this is copper 1 bromate. Now, we can see how that's the case by looking at the next example. This looks a whole lot like the last one, doesn't it? But there is a big difference. We have parentheses and a, a subscript in there. Once again, Cu is still copper, and BrO3 is still bromate. But this time, we do have subscripts we can unswap. You know. There's a 2 there, and that means that there was a 1 here, so we can put the minus 1 up there, and that 2 is the charge on copper this time. So this formula is copper 2 bromate. So hopefully you can see what difference the 1 and the 2 will make in your formula there. Let's try the next example. CD is cadmium. And SO3 is sulfite, cadmium sulfite. Now, cadmium is a transition metal, but do we need a transition, or a uh, Roman numeral in parentheses here? Well, we don't. And you might re remember that cadmium is one of those three exceptions, right? We had zinc, silver, and cadmium. Cadmium is always plus two, so it's really redundant if we were to say cadmium-2 on this. So it's just cadmium sulfite for this one. The next example, we have Pb, which is lead. And then we have NO3, so we know that's nitrate. And so lead, nitrate. And lead is not, a, is not a transition metal, but it is one of those other elements, you know, along with uh, bismuth and uh, we had uh, tin. Lead is one of those that needs to have a Roman numeral in it, even though it's not a transition metal. So we have to unswap the charges here. So we can look at, you know, there's a 1 here that goes with the nitrate. And so that 2 goes with the lead. So this is actually lead 2 nitrate. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing how the Roman numerals and transition metals and others that need these two work uh, into this, this rule. Let's try another few examples here. And then we'll do a few that are a little bit more difficult. Some challenge questions here at the end of the, of the video. So on this one, we need to split it in half. Sometimes it's not obvious where. We'll split it right down the middle. NH4 is a, trans is a, is a polyatomic ion. Excuse me. That's ammonium. And then NO3 is also a polyatomic ion. We call that nitrate. And so here we have ammonium nitrate. And that's the name of this compound. By the way, this happens to be a, co a compound that's commonly used as a fertilizer. Maybe you've heard of ammonium nitrate fertilizer. Here we have another one, Ni. So that looks like nickel. And then we have CrO4, which we know is chromate. Now nickel is a transition metal, and so we need to have a Roman numeral in parentheses for that. 
So we can unswap the charges. We have two and three here. So the two goes with that. And so the three goes with the nickel. So it's nickel three chromate. Just like that. Now the next example, Mg, hopefully you realize that that's magnesium. And then we have ClO4, which is perchlorate. So it's magnesium perchlorate on that one. Let's try another one. FeCr207. So once again, if you're not sure where to split it, split it after the first metal. Okay, so Fe is iron, and then Cr207, that is dichromate. And so iron is a Roman numeral, so we, or is a transition metal, excuse me, so we've got to have a Roman numeral. So the problem is there are no extra subscripts to go with here, because the 7 here is actually a part of the dichromate. So there are no subscripts, so that means we have to assume that the charge is canceled out. Dichromate is a minus 2, according to the ion chart. So if dichromate is a minus 2, what does iron have to be? It has to be a plus 2, doesn't it? So this is iron 2 dichromate. Okay, so do you see how this works? We had some more with uh, transition metals. A few that didn't have transition metals. We always like those. Those are a little easier with the magnesium, we had ammonium. The last few here are tougher. They are challenge questions. Let's see how you do with these. We have Ca2O2. Now Ca, of course, is calcium. Now we have the O2, and we might think that would be oxide, but it's actually peroxide. And we know that because, you know, normally you'd simplify down a, a 2 and a 2, wouldn't you? But since they're not simplified down, that means that there's a polyatomic ion present in this compound. So the polyatomic ion is actually the peroxide. And so that's why we have to, to, to write it like this, calcium peroxide. Here's another one that's also tricky in its own way. We have uh, Hg, which we know is mercury. And then we have the NO3, which of course is nitrate. And mercury is a transition metal, so we have to have a uh, Roman numeral in parentheses here. But we also notice that there's a 2 and a 2. Normally we'd simplify that down, wouldn't we? But that, since it's not simplified, that means that this, that this 2 right here must be part of a, of a uh, polyatomic ion. And it is. There is a form of mercury that's a polyatomic ion. If you have my ion chart, it's at the very bottom of the left-hand side. And it's called mercury-1. And mercury-1 has a formula of Hg2 with a charge of plus 2. Okay? And the nitrate is just minus 1. So, you know, we don't put anything down here, but this 2 tells us why there's a 2 right there. Okay, this is mercury 1 nitrate. Compounds with mercury 1 always seem to be a little bit tougher to write formulas for and to name because, you know, they're just kind of kind of weird. We got a the we have this unusual situation where it has a charge of a plus 2, but we call it 1, you know, because the atoms average out to plus 1, I suppose. And we got a polyatomic ion in there as well. So mercury 1 nitrate. Here's another one. Looks like that's a typo, but no, that is actually the name of the, or the, the formula for this compound. We're going to divide it up after the first metal, chromium, and we know that Cr, of course, is chromium, like I said, and so then we have the CrO4 part of that, and so that is called chromate. We have chromium chromate, 
It sounds kind of sounds kind of fun there. And there are no subscripts because this four goes with the chromate. So that means we have to assume that the charge is canceled out. Our ions, our, our ion chart tells us that chromate is a minus two, so the chromium has to be a plus two. So we're going to call this chromium two chromate. Here's the last one. This is a tough one as well. Pb, we have down here, we know that Pb is for lead, and we know that SO4 is for sulfate, and so this doesn't look too hard so far, so far until we realize that lead is one of those other elements that needs a Roman numeral in parentheses. So we start unswapping the charges because you know we do have some subscripts we can unswap. So this two looks like there's a one down here, but then we realize that sulfate is not a minus one. The ion chart clearly tells us that sulfate is a minus two. So what's going on here? Is there a mistake? No, there's no mistake. It's this is one of those cases where uh, we have to, where we had to simplify in order to get these subscripts. You might remember that there was a case where uh, we had from the last video where we had a two and a four and had to simplify those down to get one and a two. That's the same thing here, except we're going backwards, so we have to uh, double these. If sulfate is actually twice that, minus two, well, that means this lead is actually twice what that is, and it's actually a plus four. Okay, so that's a lead four sulfate. So those are some challenge compounds there. If you didn't quite get all those the first time, that's okay. Try them again. Uh, the goal is to be able to Name these ionic compounds as, as quickly as you can and as accurately as you can as well. I hope you learned something. I hope this video was of educational use to you. If it was, then please uh, smash that like button. I hope you have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button as well. And I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.